My name is Harold E. Johnson. Uh, I was a private in the Marines in World War II. Uh, I served out in the Pacific with the 1st Marine Division. I was a depression child, and I lived in Brooklyn, New York with my mother and father. I was the only child, and uh, things were very, very rough then. In the summer of 1944, I volunteered to get into the Marine Corps, and was, I, I was rejected because I had an overbite with impingement. Uh, even though I asked them that it was I expected to bite the Japanese to death, uh, they still wouldn't take me. Uh, the Navy said they would take me, and I told them that if I wanted to go in the Navy, I would have applied for them to start with. So I went to see my dentist. I shouldn't say my dentist. I didn't know who he was, but he was down at the corner of the street that I lived on, and he was kind enough to grind all my teeth down so that I could bite forward when they checked me for an overbite and to dispose of it. Uh, the following week, I went back to the recruiting office and the same corpsman got hold of me, and st stuck his tongue depressor in my mouth, and said, bite, and I bit, and he looked in, and he says, my God. And he called another doctor, and the doctor came over and looked in, and soon I had a whole ring of doctors uh, looking into my mouth, and finally one of them said, well, if you want to get in the stupid Marines that, that bad, uh, you're in. I was a member of the Marines from the summer of 1944. I actually was not called for training until December when I went to boot camp at Paris Island. I was in platoon uh, 836, commanded by a Sergeant Smith. Um, I was issued an M1 rifle, serial number 1060170. Uh, this kind of stuff was beat into us rather thoroughly. And I can remember the first night at Paris Island I was laying in a bunk with clean sheets underneath me, two good blankets over me. I had shoes that no one had worn before. I'd had the best meal I'd had in years. And I thought this was a really great deal. And there were even rumors that we're going to be paid. We left out of, uh, I believe it was San Diego on a troop ship and uh, landed on Okinawa. Uh, I joined the tank battalion and was assigned the position of bow gunner in an old M4A2 tank. And the tanks were miserable things to be in. I've since learned that the majority of the casualties suffered by marine tankers were heat exhaustion rather than uh, actual combat losses. And that's why I was in the tank battalion. Uh, I remember the tank was extremely hot. You, you burned your hands if you touch the hull. Uh, and I was riding, I was the bow gunner, and I'd open the hatch, and I was out of the hatch partially, trying to get what fresh air I could. And I heard the tank commander come over the here, said, saying bog, which was the term for bow gunner. Bog, get your censored, censored butt back down inside this tank. So I started to go back down. I heard something go bang in the back end. And I was out and running off the side of the thing. And I hit the deck with my hands over my head. And I turned around and looked. And flames were coming out of every joint in that tank. It, there were a few effective Japanese anti-tank guns. And I've since learned it was what they called a Type 1 47 millimeter gun and it hit us right behind the turret where the fuel and the ammunition was stored, and she torched immediately. Uh, I was put into another tank the next day, and uh, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life was getting down into it. I was the only one that came out of that first one. When the war was over and we finally came home, uh, there are a lot of differences in me. When I first joined the Marines, bear in mind I was a rather hungry, impoverished, small boy. When I came home, I was somewhat harder. Uh, I was being paid steadily. Uh, I stayed in the Marine Corps. Um, and uh, I was grown up. Uh, we all came from 
practically the same thing now. When we joined the Marines, we were all hungry and threadbare. And uh, all of us tried to give the Marine Corps back at least as much as they gave us. My generation, the so-called greatest generation, I don't know about that very much, but uh, we pulled the country. We lived during the Great Depression. And yet, we came out of a depression. We fought the greatest war that the world has ever seen. We took a tremendous evil off the face of the earth, the Nazis and the Japanese. Uh, we rebuilt Europe. We rebuilt the United States. Uh, I think we really did good for my generation.